The Gaussian pulse generator generates an electrical Gaussian pulsed signal. For this example, we will use a bit sequence generator at the input of the pulse generator to create the bit sequence that will determine the location of the pulses. We will be using a fork, two pulse generators, and comparing them in an oscilloscope so that we can easily observe the effects of changing different parameters. Clicking the bit sequence generator, we can see the bit sequence we will be using. Calculating the project and clicking on the visualizer allows you to see the results. As you can see, the output is not quite what you may have expected because the pulses are at a width where they overlap and end up interfering with each other. Double clicking on our pulse generator block, we can see the properties of the pulse generator. One parameter that will help reduce the overlap is selecting truncated. Truncating the pulses will reduce or eliminate overlap. Double clicking the oscilloscope, we can see the modified signal up top and the original signal below. We observe that there is less overlap now that the signal is truncated. Another way to reduce the overlap is to change width value. Changing the value of width to 0.3 will make each pulse have a FWHM width of 0.3 of a bit. Running the program, we can see that the pulses become narrower. Modifying the settings of both blocks to make them identical again, we can see what the next change will do. In the format for pulse range box, we can change the pulse to get its properties from DC bias and amplitude rather than defining the minimum and maximum values. The maximum value will now be equal to the DC bias plus amplitude and the minimum value will be equal to the DC bias minus amplitude. In the visualizer, we can see that the pulses now have a DC bias of negative one and an amplitude of two as expected. Going back into the properties of the pulse generator, we can observe the effect that changing the order has on the pulse. Running the program, you can see that the higher order Gaussian function has a flatter top and a quicker or steeper Gaussian falloff. Changing the value of position provides a phase shift of whatever value entered. A position value of 0.5 should give a phase shift of 0.5 bits to the right. Checking the visualizer, we can see that the pulses have been shifted as expected. Deselecting the external input bit sequence box will make the pulses stop being controlled by the bit sequence present at the input, and instead pulses will be defined by the generating pulse parameters section. The location of pulses can be changed by changing the values in pulse peak location. With the new values added, we should now see pulses at 1, 3, 5, and 9 nanoseconds. Editing the second pulse generator to make the settings the same, we can now calculate the project to see the results. Going to the visualizer and changing the range, we can see that the pulses occur where we expect them to be. You will also notice that the blocks are no longer connected to the bit sequence generator because they are no longer dependent on it. Going back into the properties, we can see that this current bit sequence is set to repeat every time window. The value of time window can be edited by clicking beside it. Here we can change the repeat cycle to be dependent on other parameters or even be defined by a function. We will leave it as is and pressing evaluate we can see what the value of time window currently is. Time window is a global parameter and can be seen above. If we want it to repeat more often, we can divide the value of time window by 10 to make it repeat more often. Double clicking anywhere on the workspace brings up the global parameters window. In this window, it is possible to change the value of time window as well as any other global parameters. However, we will leave it the same for now. Running it, we can see that the signal repeats more often because we divided the variable time window that controls the repeat parameter by 10. The FWHM parameter controls the full width at half maximum. The value of FWHM defines the width of the pulse at half of its maximum amplitude. Pressing evaluate script, we can see what the current value is for that. We can change the value of FWHM to see what the result will be. 
with a larger value of FWHM, the pulse width at half maximum will be wider. So in other words, we will have a wider pulse. The value for FWHM is also dependent on sample rate. Going into the global parameters window, we can change the sample rate as well. Making the sample rate smaller will in turn make the FWHM width wider. Calculating the project, we can see that the result is as expected and the pulse width is wider. We also notice the pulses are now starting to overlap. Going into properties, we can change truncation width to prevent overlap. Pressing evaluate, we can see truncation width is a lot larger than our FWHM width, so truncation will not have any effect with its current settings. Dividing truncation width by 100 will reduce the truncation width enough to reduce the width of the pulse and get rid of the pulses interfering with each other. Calculating the project, we can see that pulses are now truncated to prevent them interfering with each other. Going back into the pulse generator and going into the simulation window, we can click beside sample rate to open up the parameter script editor for the sample rate of this block. Sample rate is currently defined by the global parameter sample rate, but can be changed to be defined by other layout parameters or even a function. Pressing evaluate, we can see what the sample rate is. Notice it is the same value we changed it to when we changed the sample rate earlier. To edit sample rate again or any other global parameters, you can simply click anywhere on the workspace or up top.